So today I'm going to be unboxing a new product from Gigabyte. Now I've done a lot of Intel motherboards over the past few months. A lot of P55 boards, a lot of X58 boards, but now I'm starting to look at a few more AM3 boards. So this is a 790FXTA UD5. So this is their premium AM3 motherboard. It comes with all of their highest end features, including the three year warranty, etc, etc, as well as their 333 onboard acceleration. So that's USB 3.0, what is this? I think it's like power times three. So it means that all of the USB ports have three times the available power. So if you're using a hub or something like that, it takes a lot more high draw devices in order to overpower the port. And then it also has SATA 3.0. Oh yeah, here it is. <laughs> they have it listed not once, but twice on the front. Okay, so this also has a bunch of other high-end features. It has Ultra Durable 3, including the two ounce copper PCB. It has support for three-way Crossfire graphics, DDR3, 1866+, plus, eight plus two phase power design, Dolby Home Theater. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, it doesn't come in a high-end box, so I can't like show you the window, but since we're gonna open the box anyway, I guess it's kind of a moot point. There's a pink square here, which is very interesting. Maybe not interesting. Camera person has a bit of a bemused look on, on, yeah, okay, I'll just move along. Moving right along, okay, here's our Dolby Home Theater sticker. Let's get down to what is all included. We have one IDE cable and four SATA cables, two of which are straight and two of which are right angle cables. Then we have an IO shield, which is color coded, including, uh, I'll show you what the color coding means after. Then we have a gigabyte sticker. It is powered by Gigabyte. Then we have the user's manual, as well as the driver and utility DVD. Don't use the stuff on that DVD. Download the latest from the Gigabyte website. Then you have a multilingual installation guidebook showing you how to install a motherboard. Although odds are pretty good if you don't have someone to teach you and you've never done it before, you're not buying a standalone motherboard. All right, let's get this board out of here and get this show on the road. So let's just, yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's got a little piece of tape sealing it at the back, and you can see under there we've got a, a black AM3 backplate, which is the same as an AM2 or AM2 Plus backplate because they all use the same four hole mounting configuration. Okay, so let's start with the three times uh, VGA thing here. Okay, so you've got two PCI Express 16X slots, and this bottom one is a PCI Express 8X slot. You can tell because I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this on the camera, but the metal contacts only go up to about here in the slot. So even though it's a physical 16X slot, it's only 8X. But because it's PCI Express 2.0, it doesn't really matter that it's 8X. You're not going to see an impact on performance. Next down here, we have a couple of USB 2.0 headers. You can see that all over this board, we have... Oh no, that's not really true. Okay, I'm not going to say that. Okay, on the side, <clears throat> we have six SATA 2 ports, as well as two SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports, so that's pretty cool. We have an IDE connector and a floppy connector for some reason. And then, in very unusual positions, we have... I'm sorry, I'm turning this on you. We have a power and a reset onboard switch way up here. I'm not really sure why those are there because normally you'd find them down at the bottom of the board, but there they are. We have a 24 pin power connector up at the top right. And then the other power connector, I'm gonna shift your attention over here, is up at the top left in its ideal position. There's your eight pin. Okay, here is the AM3 socket supporting only AM3 CPUs. And then we've got support for four sticks of dual channel DDR3 memory. Unlike most Intel boards, most AMD boards actually put the uh, each kit in the color coded slots which are right next to each other. Whereas normally on an Intel board, you'd find them uh, in slots one and three for optimal dual channel uh, configuration. Okay, so then we have a pretty high end looking sort of heat pipe cooler for the Southbridge, Northbridge and uh, VRMs. Okay, I think that covers most of our, oh, this is, Oh, this is this is really cool actually. Look, it's like a it's like a missile launch button. It's got like a clear cover over it and this is your clear CMOS switch which is conveniently located somewhere where you'll actually be able to reach it because like the power and reset, so often they're located down here by the time you install two graphics cards. I mean, you can't even reach it. So this is really convenient. I like that. Then on the back of the motherboard, and I'm going to hold up the IO shield so that you can get some context for this. We have two PS2 ports two digital audio ports, then we have, <clears throat> okay, we have four plain Jane USB ports, and those are these two yellow ones right here, and these two black ones right here, those are just USB 2.0. 
Then we have two USB SATA 2 eSATA combo ports, and those are these two yellow ones here. And then we have two USB 3.0 ports. Okay, so that's the USB configuration on the back. These standards are all intercompatible. So you don't have to worry too much about where you plug in your mouse. It's just that if you want optimal performance from a USB 3.0 external hard drive, for example, you want to use these guys. Okay, you got a couple Firewire ports, 7.1 audio, as well as two gigabit ethernet ports. And that concludes my unboxing of the Gigabyte GA790FXTAUD5.